I recently encountered some badly corroded brake bleed nipples on my Nissan X-Trail and successfully removed all four without snapping or shearing any. So I feel my method may be of help to others in the same situation. So here's a photograph of what they looked like. So when I saw this, I was pretty much convinced that failure was going to be on the horizon. These are the tools I use to successfully remove the bleed nipples. Plenty of plus gas or WD-40, a very fine point blowtorch with a heat mat, a small hammer for gentle tapping, some form of locking wrench and possibly you'll need some replacement bleed nipples afterwards. So this is what I used. So I used plenty of plus gas dismantling fluid. I then used a fine point map gas which went up to 1850 degrees centigrade. Obviously you'll need a map with that to protect the pipes. A small hammer just for gentle tapping. Ideally a locking wrench that the more pressure you exert on the bleed nipple the tighter it gets. And you're likely to need some new bleed nipples especially as you may trash the old ones on removing them and when you do use new bleed nipples a little bit of silicone grease. So on to the first bleed nipple. So as we saw in the photo the bleed nipple is almost non-existent. So let's try a bit of plus gas. I'm probably being a bit optimistic just spraying the rusty metal so I thought let's clean up the metal with a wire brush first. That way when I do spray the plus gas on it might actually stand a chance of getting to the threads of the bleed nipple. And it's so thin there, any twisting effect is going to shear that off. So I really need to make sure this is loose. So I thought gentle shocking. Not too much, just enough to hopefully start shaking things up. So gentle and plenty of time and perseverance I'm hoping will be the key to this. I'll give it a bit of map gas now. Not too much, I don't want to overheat it really, I just want to try and get those threads on the bleed nipple moving slightly inside the caliper so that when I do exert a twisting effect to it it actually will hopefully come undone and not just shear off because obviously if it shears off or comes undone slightly and then shears off that's the vehicle out of operation because I'll have no rear brake so it is pretty important that I actually re remove this bleed nipple in one piece. And to drill out a bleed nipple as well and then clean the threads, it just doesn't really bear thinking about, especially if the other three are like this. So the key to this is really patience and plenty of it. So now I am actually feel like I'm ready to actually exert some turning force onto this bleed nipple. And there's a very slight bit of movement. Now if I carry on, it was very likely to still shear off. So I've got to be very careful here, still feel for it. So we're starting to get brake fluid oozing out, which is a good sign. So I'm just going to keep moving this nipple backwards and forwards. A spanner's no good. Um, what I am going to do now to minimise the brake fluid loss onto the floor is put some clamps on there while I take this backwards and forwards. So I'm having to use like these seem to be the only tool I can actually use on this because they are sort of wedging the, the nipple and actually getting a good grip on it. Um, I mean you could try mole grips but I don't know. These seem to be just the ticket at the moment. So while it's working, I'll keep with it. it obviously, it does create a little bit of damage on there, but I don't think that's really of any importance at this point. 
and once this job's done I'm more than likely to replace all four of these bleed nipples with some new ones so we eventually got it free in the end which was brilliant news so almost a little miracle in itself I did not think I would actually pull that off so I'm just going to put a little bit of copper ease or copper grease on there um, may not technically be the right thing to do on a brake component but for the moment that would do it means I have got a working bleed nipple and I can now carry on with the job in hand which is hopefully to actually bleed all the brakes so on to the second bleed nipple so initially I was quite optimistic this one might have actually come out because it wasn't as rusty as the other one and it looked like a spanner might fit um, but it didn't come out so we're back to wire brushing and repeating all the steps we just did on the first bleed nipple having a quick look there the disappointment again plus gas And then heat. This one in some ways was actually more stubborn than the last one. So we get some heat on. I haven't sped this up because I thought it was quite important that people actually see how long I was heating it for. So if I sped it up it might look like I've been heating it for a long time. And it wasn't. I was just trying to give it short bursts. Um, just to try and loosen it with the least amount of heat, the least amount of shock, um, because these are so fragile. So as I feel now, I can feel it's not going to turn. You just know it's not going to turn. And if you push it, it's going to shear. So you've got to really feel how this metal is going to go or react to putting too much torque on so we do get some slight movement there so as soon as you've got some movement you're on your way so it's then a case of be even more patient and just turn it backwards and forwards the slightest amount and just keep feeding the plus gas into it and even if it's raining like it is in Wales just sit there with an umbrella and keep going backwards and forwards backwards and forwards I never thought I had this much patience I think it was the fear of snapping that bleed nipple a front caliper not going to be cheap is it so then we start getting some movement but it's still binding again so wind it back in until it actually comes out on its own without too much effort you just have to keep winding it backwards and forwards backwards and forwards and then it comes out fantastic back to bleeding then another one done so clearly the other two are going to be the same as this I presume bleed nipple number three please again we've got a very similar picture of a corroded bleed nipple which clearly is not going to come out so we we'll start with the old wire brushing again get all the rust off our trusty old plus gas and of course heat it does seem to be a combination of all of these now you have got to watch there's the fuel filler on this side so there is a fuel pipe going down to the tank so you really don't want to get map gas anywhere near that Admittedly it's not petrol, so it's not as flammable. 
but either way you still don't want to melt a pipe out inadvertently so let's get some heat on this situation we're starting to get the hang of this now this process seems to work I mean, there's always a first time for one of these to snap and this is number three obviously if one of these does snap it sort of gives me an issue with the video because I won't be able to complete it in a reasonable time so you can feel it that it's not going to move you can just tell you just know that if you keep going it's going to shear. So we go for the old ratty tatty hammer. Now I think I've got some movement there because we've got brake fluid coming down the handle. So yeah. But again, it's back and forwards. If you carry on just turning, it more than likely will bind and then shear. So you'd have done all that work for nothing. So it is. I try and speed this up, but I don't want to sort of admit any of the scenes because then it gives an unrealistic um, impression as to how easy the job might have been. So if I try and leave these scenes in, you can actually see the process for real, as it were. So now we're getting some movement. That's it. So that might just come out now. But again, it's best just to be patient. And the slightest bit of resistance, you stop. And that one's out. So that's number three. So the odds are in our favour at the moment. We've gone past 50%. So I'm just putting a bit of copper ease on there. Like I said, I'm not sure whether you should use that you probably shouldn't on braking systems, but for the moment, I'm just going to use it. Like I said, I am going to remove these bleed nipples and put new ones in. So we've definitely got a drip there. We just better pinch it and snug it up tight. Bleed nipple number four, please. So let's hope this one goes as well as the others i say well they did come out so there we are with our old plus gas again i am amazed at how corroded these are and it does make me wonder whether the brake fluid has ever been changed if it's really this bad to try and get these bead nipples out There seem to be quite a lot of surface rust on the underside of these 4x4s. I've noticed that with all the 4x4s. They all seem to, the Honda CRV, the Suzuki Grand Vitara, and now the Nissan X Trail, they all seem to have a lot of surface rust. So perhaps these items just seem to rust more on a 4x4 for some reason. Um, but yeah, I've never come across them this bad. But hopefully this one will then come out. I think the tapping seems to help. That light tapping seems to just send some nice shock waves through there. So we'll try now. No. You can just tell it's just not, you know, when you think they're only tightened up to under 10 newton meters, that's not a lot. So it shouldn't take a lot of torque to undo it. So now, oh, we've got a slight bit of movement there. See, a very tiny bit of movement. So once you've got that tiny bit of movement, all you've got to do is just keep playing with it. Just work it back and forwards, bit by bit until it goes further and further around. Keep it well lubricated 
with a penetrating fluid and just keep going back and forth back and forth and then hopefully it will just keep going undone like that so the fourth one is the success story as well that is good news so just tighten that get the plus gas in there as well okay so I'm just going to unwind that you can see the brake fluid there is actually dripping out so you do want to contain under that I don't really want it to leave it to go on the floor so I've just put a bit more copper ease on that like I did on the others and so I'll just snug that one up tight and I can get on with the process in hand now like I said I think you're supposed to use silicon grease when putting the bleed nipples back in not copper ease and here's some macro photographs of the removed bleed nipples. So hopefully you can see just how bad these bleed nipples were. I've even broken one open so you can clearly see the bleed hole that runs through the centre of the nipple. Thank you for watching and please like and subscribe.